Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Morning Report. My name is Willie Lawson. The Morning Report is a production of fightbackmedia.com, 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 and fightbackmediatv.com. I trust that you are well today. It is October 20th. This month is hustling its bustle. It's getting there. We're almost done with it. It's almost Halloween and soon it'll be one of the best holidays ever, Thanksgiving. Uh, for all sorts of reasons, because, you know, it is important to give thanks for what we have to God, not to the universe, but to God, and um, how he continues to bless each and every one of us each and every day. Um, so that's exciting. Oh, and the food is off the chain. Everybody, everybody gets to eat. Uh, it's great. And, and, for those of, and for those families who are struggling, we all get a chance to help, which is very, very cool which is very, very cool. I remember uh, a, a number of years ago um, for Thanksgiving, uh, instead, our, our church, instead of, you know, us being home and, you know, and, and pigging out, we actually went to a um, another church that uh, actually fed people who were homeless and served them food. We didn't have to bring anything but ourselves and our spirit. And, um, my son got to see that, and 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 from then on, it was real. I mean, he was he was young, and from then on, he's thirty two now. Uh, he's got to got to be really thankful for you know for the things that he has. Uh, and if you've got young people, if you've got young people in your house, if you've got children in your house, um, it's great to talk about these things, and it's great for you to write a check to this or that, or you know, you know, give a few bucks here or there. But you know what's better? If you can find an opportunity that the family can go somewhere, get their hands dirty a little bit, talk to people, pray for people. Um, it's, it's a much better thing. Uh, there is a place in Tampa um, that it's a kitchen and um, they serve lunch. They serve breakfast and lunch. Yes, breakfast and lunch. And um, my wife and I volunteered there a number of times. And it's always an amazing time. It's always an amazing time where we get to, you know, we get to be with people, we get to pray with people, we get to serve them. Because um, a lot of those people, uh, you know, a lot of people in, in those positions, they don't get served anymore. They get sort of pushed off to the back. And in most of those places, you know, most of the soup kitchens around the, uh, around the country, uh, they, you know, it's like a cafeteria thing where they go and they get a plate and somebody slops food down on them. No, no, no. At, um, at this particular place, they sit down, it's like a restaurant. Uh, we tell them what the, what's on the menu and then we go get it for them and bring it to their table while they while they rest uh, because you know a lot of them have been up all night um, and they're tired so they get a chance to sit down and, ha and have someone actually serve them is there anything else I can get for you do you need water do you need tea um, do you need do you need more silverware more napkins what do you need it is a blessing to do. Uh, it is truly a blessing to do. So if you can find somewhere uh, where you live to do that, I'm telling you, it's going to be great for the people you help, but it's going to be greater for you. It's going to be greater for your spirit. I, 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 trust me, trust me, trust to believe that I'm talking when I, that I know what I'm talking about. Um, so, so, so if you can do that, do that. And if you can take your children, you know, sometimes those places, you know, places like that don't want really young kids. Um, but if you have teenagers, you can take, take them, let them see what they have, what they have. You know, it's, it's, you know, people say all the time that these kids just don't appreciate what they have and they don't. How, how can they? How can I appreciate something I've always had? How can I appreciate something that I've always had that everybody I know has? How can I appreciate it? It's an unrealistic expectation to expect that someone will, will appreciate something they've always had or will appreciate something that everybody they know already has. Until you see some people who've never had it, who don't know what you're talking about. And through no, no fault of their, their own, don't have the things that you take for granted. It's, a, it, it, it's, it's the most powerful lesson there is. 
It is the most powerful lesson there is. But make sure you do it. Make sure you 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 set that up as well, as, you know, as often as you can, as quickly as you can, because once you do, you are going to be, your children are going to be different. You are going to be different. You are going to be different. All right, let's get started with the program. Uh, again, this is the Morning Report. My name is Willie Lawson. Uh, the Morning Report is a production of fightbackmedia.com, 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 and fightbackmediatv.com. Let's get into the stories. Our girl, Stacey Abram, gonna love Stacey. Stacey doesn't want to be governor of Georgia. <laughs> it is it is blatantly obvious to me that, that Stacey Abrams is not the least bit interested in becoming governor of Georgia, because if she becomes governor of Georgia, he, she can't say all this stuff. She just can't. Here, here's the latest. Uh, the um, Georgia Democrat gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams suggested that abortion could be one of the ways of addressing inflation concerns. During an interview with on MSNBC, contributor Mike Barnacle uh, acknowledged that abortion is an issue, but reminded Abrams that it does not reach the level of interest in, of voters in terms of the cost of gas, food, bread, milk. He wondered what the Democrat could do if elected governor to, quote, alleviate the concern of Georgia voters about these daily economic issues. Now, when, you, when, when they'll only concentrate on one thing, one thing and one thing only, they don't have an answer for anything else. But Abrams argued, Stacy argued, that abortion and inflation are related. She said this, let, let's be clear. Having children is why you're, uh, uh, excuse me, why you are worried about your food for your, your price of gas. Uh, it's why you're concerned about how much food costs. For women, this is not a reductive. This, this is not reductive issues. Abrams continued, "You can't divorce being forced to carry an unwanted pregnancy from the economic realities of having a child. We don't have the luxury of reducing it or separating them out." Abrams then went on to discuss what issues a governor can address, such as housing and education costs. But she says, "But let's not pretend that women, half of the population, especially in childbearing age." They understand that having a child is absolutely an economic issue. It's only politicians that see it as another cultural conversation, she added. Wow. So correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, especially on YouTube. Uh, correct me if, I'm, if, I'm, if you think I'm wrong in the comments. Is Stacey Abrams saying that if we would just let people kill their children, uh, we wouldn't have to worry about inflation as much. It wouldn't be as big a concern. If we could just let people murder their kids, if we could just, you know, have them murder their kids. Now, what we also know as true is that more black children are aborted than any other race of children in America. Did she address that? Yes, in her comments later on, she did address housing and education. Um, but did she address that? What about the, the reality, speaking of realities, that more black children are aborted in America than any other race of children? So what do you think? Do you think that Stacey has a point? I guess in a very ghoulish way, she has a point. Yeah, if I didn't have all these damn kids, I, you know, I'd be able to stretch my budget a little further rather than all these damn kids. And if I just got no, you know, get you sucked out with a vacuum cleaner and get your brain sucked out, that'd have been, oh goodness, if I could have aborted your ass, that'd have been great. Is that what you're saying? No, now what's interesting is that somebody we follow on here on, on YouTube, um, Peach, Peaches McIntyre, uh, did just did a, a video today telling people that, you know, have you used your your Medicaid over the counter 
allocation. So there are so many, so many ways to get support for children from the government that it's hard for everybody, even people on public assistance to even keep up with. There's so much. So are, are children really, especially children of people who are disadvantaged, quote, end quote, is it really that hard? I mean, when you, yeah, so, so you get less with your food stamps. Okay. But you get food stamps, right? It isn't that you, you have to raise that money, that you have to go out and work for that money. You get food stamps. And the allocation of food stamps um, increases with, it, it, it has a, um, the cost of living, cost of living increase as if you are working, doesn't it? Am I wrong? If I'm wrong about that, put that in the con in, 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 down in the comments. If I'm wrong about um, increases in in food stamps due to cost of living, which means inflation. So no, the concerns of of the dis of quote, the, the disadvantage and some of the people that um, Stacey Abrams is talking about. No, they have they they have less worries than, say, someone like me, uh, who has two kids and a wife, and because we both have jobs, and we are not on public assistance, that all of this is coming out of my check, all of this, and I have to do all of this. Are you saying that if I had just aborted one of my kids, I'd, I'd be in a better I'd be in a better position. Is that what you're saying? Is that the ra is that the rationale that 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 you want to go forward with? Well, if you want you know your life to be better, and you don't have to worry about inflation, just allow people to to abort their children because you know more kids, more money. Less kids, more money in your pocket. More money, more money in your pocket. Less kids. Is that the kind of world you want to live in? Is that the kind of world you want to live in? So I mean, because that's I mean that's what it comes down to. Is that the kind of world you want to live in? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, because a lot a, a, a lot of us say all the time. Um, Birth control is free in America. As a matter of fact, birth control is free in most places in the world. That, that's amazing, isn't it? Birth control is free in most places in the world. Definitely free in America. I don't know of any city in America, any county in America, where you you can't get birth you cannot get birth control from the county health authority. I mean, health health, health authorities. I don't know of any place in America. If you do, put it down in the comments. If where you live, there is no access to free birth control, whether uh, it be um, IUDs, whether it be uh, the patch, whether it's the um, whether it's rubbers, diaphragms. It, really, is there a place in America where birth control isn't free? free now that that whole discussion about it, it, the value of something that doesn't cost any money that's that sort of raises its ugly head again doesn't it but it's free and you know what abstinence works a thousand percent of the time i know that's hyperbolic but abstinence works all the time not having sex will guarantee that you will not produce children, that you cannot afford to raise, feed, clothe, educate. If you do not have sex, if you do not have sex, you are guaranteed not to have children. If you do not you know, participate in 
copulation and sexual intercourse. There'll be no children. Unless you're Mary and you're given and you're given birth to Jesus, which I'm guessing you are not. I'm guessing you are not. All right. Um, thank you ever so much. Uh, we'll be back right after these messages. Everybody. my name is Willie Lawson and um, you guys know that I do a lot of stuff on the internet and you may think with um, what's happening on Twitter and what's happening on Facebook and what happened to Parler that um, the mainstream uh, social media sources are really trying to rid themselves of conservative voices and you'd be right they most certainly are um, but you know what it isn't as bad as you think it is it's worse but there are uh, people who are willing to be platformed for free speech one of those one of those places is freedomforum.website freedomforum.website you can go there and speak your mind so come join us enjoy the freedom enjoy the fun if you are a true blue conservative Small businesses are near and dear to your heart. They are the lifeblood of our life and economy. I believe this, and that's why my florist is not a website or a phone number. My florist is Blooming Days Flower Shop, Tampa's premier flower shop. At 11618 North Florida Avenue here in Tampa, Florida, and at 68. 35 State Road 54 in Newport Ritchie. Call Christine at 813-933-1942 and at 727-232-6900. She can also be reached on the web at www.bloomingdays.com. One of the things that I get asked most is where can I get information that is not tainted with liberal bias, especially here in the Tampa Bay area? Well, now I have the answer. DBCTampa.com, a website by and for Tampa area conservatives. Tampa's leading conservative voices speak freely at tbctampa.com. And you can too. So join the fun and enjoy the freedom at tbctampa.com. My name is Willie Lawson, and this is The Morning Report. All right, welcome back to uh, The Morning Report. 
the Morning Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. My name is Willie Lawson. It is October 19, 2022, in the year of our Lord. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Joe Biden, uh, President Biden, and his fitness. I'll say it that way. Fitness. Um, first of all, he is an elderly person. There isn't any way around that Joe Biden is an elderly person. Um, being of a certain age myself, some of the things I, I understand. Uh, right now, if if and I were president, there'd be a presidential nap. That's all there is to it. Now, I know I would catch holy hell. Well, the world's on fire. The president is taking a nap. <laughs> oh my God! That's exactly what you what you see on CNN. Shh, president is taking a nap. That's exactly what you'd see all the time. Well, it's ten. It's ten p.m. Do you know where the president is? Shh, he went to bed at nine. <laughs> yes. That's what it would be like. So I get it to a degree. I understand. Oh, no, I, I definitely be taking a nap. Because people would walk into the Oval Office at like 6.30 in the evening after I'd been up all day, and they would see this. That's exactly what they'd see. I promise you. That would happen more than once. Be, Mr. President? Mr. President? Oh, oh. Let's go around. Oh no, it's cool, it's cool. Take it off, take all that. <laughs> so the health of the uh, chief executive is important. And so is the health of other people who are in charge of representing us in Congress and in the Senate. Uh, John Fetterman, who was running for the US Senate in Pennsylvania, um, on Tuesday, his, his campaign released a doctor's letter vouching for the Democrat nominee's fitness to serve in the U.S. Senate. Now, it just seems like they were hiding from this. Uh, to give you some background, John Fetterman had a, a, a massive freaking stroke um, earlier, the, or, or earlier in the campaign. It took him off the campaign trail. Now, people have strokes. Now, I don't think Fetterman would be a good candidate for Senate uh, if you are a liberty-loving American, but this guy had a stroke. Something went wrong with his brain. It's a big, it's a big friggin' deal. It is. Nobody would say, oh, that dude punked out, had a little stroke, just decided to give the seat to somebody, to you know, you know to some of these right wingers. Nobody would say that unless you were a moron and that which then which you could be ignored. But he is running for Senate. Who decided, and I guess with the support of his family, shame on the Fetterman family, shame on the Fetterman family. Um, he's going to continue the campaign. As a matter of fact, his doctor named Clifford Chin uh, also stated in his letter that Fetterman, quote, spoke intelligently without cognitive deficits. And, quote, his communication is significantly improved compared to his first visit, first visit, assisted by, assisted by speech therapy, which he has attended on a regular basis since the stroke. Uh, there's, one, there's just one problem, as far as I can, I, I can see. Um, you know, a lot of times, famous people, entertainers, athletes, have what we call hangers-on, and they will let that person get involved in all sorts of heinous BS, self-destructive stuff, because what they need to happen is they need that person to keep performing, to keep, you know, to, to stay on the field, to stay on the basketball court, because then their existence and their connection to that person is continued, right? And if you happen to be able to get a little money that makes it even sweeter. They got to keep performing, no matter if they're sick, no matter if they're 
suffering mentally no matter what. They got to get got to get out there on the field. If they're hurt, if they're suffering mentally, they gotta go, we got to we got we got to encourage them to not quit because they are our cash cow. Check out this, though. Dr. Chin, the medical expert seeking to dispel swirling discussions about Fetterman's stroke uh, recovery not progressing far or fast enough to enable him to serve a six-year term, in fact, donated to Fetterman's U.S. Senate campaign in addition to another to a, a, others, a slew of other Democrat candidates. Dr. Chen can donate to whatever candidate he wants. It bothers me. Does it bother you? It bothers the heck out of me that Dr. Chen uh, is didn't just donate to the um, political campaign of one of his patients. He might do that. But you have to wonder, what does Dr. Chen think he has to gain? This is from the Washington Free Beacon um, on the story. Chen's political leanings could raise questions about his medical assessment of Fetterman, whose race against Republican Mehmet Oz could determine which party controls the Senate. According to campaign finance records, Chen has given tens of thousands of dollars over the years to Democrat candidates and party committees. He's contributed um, $1,300 to the Fetterman campaign, including a $500 campaign donation in June of 21, uh, before he became Fetterman's doctor. Uh, Chen donated to other Senate candidates running in close races in this cycle, including Rep Representative Val Demings in Florida, and I, this dude's in Pennsylvania, because this is what this is, and, and Senate, uh, Senator Raphael Warnick in Georgia. This doctor's in Pennsylvania. Funny how that works. Fetterman and his campaign have repeatedly been less than fully forthcoming with the media and Pennsylvania voters. Um, with withholding information about the severity of the candidate's stroke and his prognosis. Fetterman has also refused calls from numerous media outlets, including the Washington Post, to actually release medical information beyond just the evaluation of a doctor. And now that the doctor responsible for attesting to Fetterman's health and fitness to serve in the world's greatest deliberative body has been revealed to be not just a generous Democrat donor, but a Fetterman campaign donor. Well, the case for more concrete medical information for Keystone State voters to evaluate Fetterman's fitness seems even more pressing and convincing. One of the comments here at this article actually opens up a whole new thing. The comment is this. Thanks for reporting on this. I have, I have known many so-called physicians in my career who opportunistically stiff, sniff out political appointment advancements this way, unethical gold diggers with medical degrees who worm their way into government appointed positions and become conduits primarily uh, for destructive leftist policies. See Dr. Fauci. You think that's what that is? Golly, I hope not. Because something in me hopes that that's not what it is. Something in, in me says, looks at this guy and says, dude, dude, you had a stroke. You damn near died. Something went wrong in your brain. That could be a signal. Shut it down, baby. Find something else to do. Spend time with your family. Not to do this. Shame on the Fetterman family for not telling um, John John to shut it down. John, shut it down. You had a stroke. Until we are sure, until we are cocksure that you are going to live and that you are going to be okay, none of this other stuff matters. None of it. Not one single bit of it. <sighs> how Jill Biden is letting her, her husband be used in this manner, it's, it's reprehensible. Absolutely reprehensible. 
All right, we're back in a little bit. Uh, the Morning Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. We'll be back right after these messages. Everybody. my name is Willie Lawson and um, you guys know that I do a lot of stuff on the internet and you may think with um, what's happening on Twitter and what's happening on Facebook and what happened to parlor that um, the mainstream uh, social media sources are really trying to rid themselves of conservative voices and you'd be right they most certainly are um, but you know what it isn't as bad as you think it is. It's worse. But there are uh, people who are willing to be platformed for free speech. One of those, one of those places is freedomforum.website. Freedomforum.website. You can go there and speak your mind. So come join us. Enjoy the freedom. Enjoy the fun. If you are a true blue conservative, Small businesses are near and dear to your heart. They are the lifeblood of our life and economy. I believe this, and that's why my florist is not a website or phone number. My florist is Bloomingdale's Flower Shop, Tampa's premier flower shop. At 11618 North Florida Avenue here in Tampa, Florida, and at 68. 35 State Road 54 in Newport Ritchie. Call Christine at 813-933-1942 and at 727-232-6900. She can also be reached on the web at www.bloomingdays.com. One of the things that I get asked most is where can I get information that it's not tainted with liberal bias, especially here in the Tampa Bay area? Well, now I have the answer. DBCTampa.com, a website by and for Tampa area conservatives. Tampa's leading conservative voices speak freely at tbctampa.com. And you can too. So join the fun and enjoy the freedom at tbctampa.com. My name is Willie Lawson, and this is The Morning Report. Go down the pathway of providing dollars to people, and they don't have to exchange labor, which is the way our economy functions, for money to pay for their goods and services. Do you think that leads to a labor shortage, yes or no? Like I said, I believe we're, we're experiencing a shortage of good jobs, not a shortage of labor. And I think it's really critical not to blame working people. For I'm not blaming prices. working people. What I would say is I'm blaming government policy. Because if you're given money without having to exchange it, 
with labor, having to take your talents and abilities and you're getting money as a result, it depends on the, in the industriousness of the individual at that point. I'm not blaming anybody. If you're giving out free money, shoot, okay, cool. Most people are just going to go ahead and take it. We know this, but if you have a legitimate economic choice to make at your kitchen table, I can go work 40 hours or I can go work 20 hours and our living does not change, people have an, their own decision to make about what they're going to do. The point I'm making is, that labor shortage, which was created by the quote-unquote American Rescue Plan, led to a labor shortage. And that labor shortage has led to price increases because you had people who had the revenue and the disposable cash flow to buy goods, but not enough goods in circulation to purchase. Mr. Goodspeed, is that an accurate assessment of what's happened in America since Joe Biden became president of the United States? Yes, I think that's a fair description. So... Let's establish a couple things. Are prices up? Yes, they are. Electricity prices are up. Good prices are up. The only reason why fuel uh, gasoline prices are down is because the president's been basically buying down the price with releases from the Strategic Petroleum Preserve, which, by the way, that's coming to an end as well. We are in a recession. I think we've covered a lot here. Look, I understand the majority party's desire to try to put this on corporate America for raising prices. But if you do not have enough workers working there's not enough goods produced. If there's not enough goods produced, but everybody still has money to go buy goods, the price of each unit actually goes up. That's how inflation is always created. More policies of the same is only gonna lead us further down the road to perdition, which we are already on. With that, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Donalds. Um, now All right, again, welcome to the Morning Report. My name is Willie Lawson. The Morning Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. Uh, we are thrilled, excited, just enamored, just cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, crazy over the moon that you are spending some time with us today. Uh, listen, do me a favor. Uh, if you like what we do at all, um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, uh, our next goal is 500 subscribers. When we get to 500 subscribers, our next goal will be 1,000 subscribers. But if you can get to a, us to 500, then we are on our way to 1,000. That'll be great. Uh, um, comment. Like I've asked you to comment um, in the comments, please. Uh, give us that thumbs up. Now, I know that, that the youngsters, the Gen Xers are like, <laughs> they get triggered by, by this. Hey, listen. Thumbs up, baby. They get triggered by that. But go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Uh, go ahead and um, share us with your friends. Share us with somebody who gets triggered by this. <laughs> Someone who gets triggered by it. Way to go, baby. Uh, nice job. If they get triggered by this, please share this program with us, especially that part right there. That'd be awesome. Because uh, you are our marketing department. Even if you are, are fat, naked, sitting in a beanbag chair, eating a bag of Cheetos, you are my marketing department. We need your help. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, um, let's, um, we were talking about Jill Biden a little bit ago and how it is kind of my thought that Jill Biden did not protect her family, did not protect her husband at all. But now she's coming uh, to the defense of the big guy in this next article. Um, First Lady Jill Biden reportedly lashed out at White House officials for not interfering with President Joe Biden's last solo presser, in which he botched the whole speech. According to a New York Times report, Jill Biden demanded to know why staffers did not stop Biden from speaking any further after he did not follow the then Press Secretary Jen Psaki's cue to wrap, wrap it up during the January press conference. I remember that press conference. It was just... Holy Jesus. Uh, she pointedly asked uh, the group, which included the president, why nobody stepped in to stop it. So according to a person who was in the room, the New York Times said, adding, where was the person, she demanded, who was supposed to end the news conference? Well, during the presser, Biden was answering questions from a prearranged approved list of questions for about an hour before Jen Psaki attempted to cut the president off, like, you're done. You're done. We're finished here. However, Biden did not get the hint. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And continue with the press. 
uh, kidding with the press, prompting Saki to get up roughly 20 minutes later and walk to the door in a yet another attempt to bring the presser to a close. Jin got up and tried to walk to the door. I mean, she she she, she did everything, but but you know the that scene in Forrest Gump where the uh, the military guy unplugs a mic when Forrest Gump's about to speak. She did everything but that. So, but not long after that, Biden asked reporters how long they wanted him to go on for. After taking a look at his watch, Biden said he had time for another 20 minutes, but he went on for another hour. It was just this big cluster, you know what? And everybody's just sitting back watching it happen. And Jill Biden is asking, why didn't somebody bring this nightmare to a close? Representative Austin Scott, Republican from Georgia, pointed out that Joe Biden knows a train wreck, wreck when she sees one. I think everyone in the White House is concerned that the president will accidentally reveal the Biden-Harris administration's true, true agenda, Scott told Fox News Digital. Meanwhile, House Republican Conference Chairwoman Elise Stefanik from New York uh, said that the president of the United States should not need a babysitter when he talks to, to the media. He shouldn't. This comes after Biden made yet another embarrassing gap while speaking to the press Monday. While promoting the Federal Trade Commission's website, Biden spelled out the word dot while giving uh, the URL. If you if you get any question, questionable calls, please tell us by reporting fraud to uh, report, per, report fraud, uh, DOT, FTC. Well, the, the website is report, reportfraud.ftc.gov. Reportfraud.ftc.gov. Report fraud, DOT, FTC.gov. Now, is he, a, is he an elderly fellow that may not understand those conventions? Yes. Is he the president of the United States and it's important that he does? Yes. This is just another example of Biden not knowing what was going on. Now, it is heartening for me to know that Jill Biden was stepping in to help her husband. Husband, she, she's had children with her, been married for years, 40 plus years, 50 years. But it's her fault. I I lay all this that's happening to that man at her feet. Joe Biden was never the same after the death of Bo. I'm not talking about the Obama dog. I'm talking about his other son. He was never the same. And now with all this coming out about Hunter in Joe's last years of life, this cannot be a good combination for the president. I am trying my best to be as human about this as I can and not political. I can get political, but I'm not going to. Shame on you, Joe Biden for allowing these people to wreck the end of Joe Biden's life. He's 80, right? Is there a chance that, that Joe Biden's going to be viable for the next 20 years? Joe, Biden, I mean, Joe Biden's not viable now. And you just want to, is it, you just want to live in a White House? What? It? I'm glad you came to the president's defense at least once that we know about. My name is Willie Lawson. This has been the Morning Report for October 19th, 2022 in the year of our Lord. Until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We will see you when we see you. Bye-bye now.